made by people like you. Your community. Your radio. Your Preston FM. Today, new survey results reveal that an unsightly rash and swelling of the face are the most likely reasons for people in the UK to cancel a first date or not go to work. However, for people with a common skin condition, urticaria, this nightmare scenario, is a very real and even common occurrence, and symptoms can appear without warning. This Wednesday, 1st of October, is Word Urticaria Day, and Allergy UK and TV doctor Pixie McKenna are joining forces to increase awareness of this skin condition which can be disfiguring and disabling and Dr Pixie McKenna joins us today alongside Lindsay McManus from Allergy UK. So can I thank you both for joining us on Preston FM? And can you tell us what is the most uh, what is most likely to stop people in our area going on a first date or going out to work? So 61% of the people in Preston who were surveyed said that they would definitely not go on a first date if they had an unsightly rash or any swelling or puffing of the face. And 41% said they wouldn't even go into work if they had this appearance. And Lindsay, can you tell us a bit more about urticaria and how common it is? It's actually quite common. One in five people in the UK have urticaria at some point in their lives. Um, it's a condition where you get well, the, the common name for it is hives or mm. nettle rash you've probably heard of that so yes. you know, it's exactly what it looks like that you've been stung by stinging nettles uh, it can be anywhere on the body or the face for some people there's associated swelling of the, the eyes and the lips particularly so it can be you know it, it's for some people, it can be quite disfiguring, um, so you can understand why they wouldn't want to go out, you know, if they were suffering from a bout of it. Yes. And Dr. Pitsky, what effects can urticaria have on people's lives and self-esteem? Well, the thing is with this condition, well, it is hives. I mean, it's far more than hives in terms of its psychological and its practical impact, really, because it makes you very self-conscious. Um, it impacts what you're going to wear, whether you're going to go into work, your social life, how you sleep. And also, because you don't know when it's going to erupt, you have no idea if you do go on that first date that your skin isn't going to flare up after the dessert comes out. So it's important to uh, to realize when, when you see people suffering from skin conditions um, that, you know, there is a huge psychological element to it um, and it makes people very self-conscious. And of course... To members of the public, when you've got any skin rash, um, I think we're all very guilty of thinking, oh, what's that? Is that catching? Mm. Which, of course, urticaria is not catching. Right. And can you tell us more about chronic spontaneous urticaria? That's a particular type of urticaria. It's chronic because it goes on longer than six weeks and often it can last for months or years. And it's spontaneous because there's no known trigger or cause. So it can occur without rhyme or reason um, at any period during the day. And it affects half a million people in the UK. So it's, it's a significant problem for a lot of people on a day-to-day basis. Yes, I, I was quite surprised, uh, people who knew that we were doing this interview today, how many people have said that they suffer from this. Yeah, and, and I'm sure through their stories, I've had it myself and, and um, had it for, for over a year. And it really, it, it's embarrassing. It's uncomfortable, but it's also very, very embarrassing because, you know, you don't know how it's going to react. And uh, the people that you meet, uh, you don't know how they are going to react in the in response to the appearance of your skin. And uh, someone did ask that I also ask you would it make a difference say not using biological washing powders would something like that help are there things that do help well for the 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 chronic urticaria um which we estimate probably about one in a thousand people suffer from um the spontaneous variety there's no known trigger or cause now obviously if you have urticaria and you you know, you've done a symptom diary and you work out that a certain thing might be flaring it up. It makes common sense to avoid it. But in the vast majority of cases, Huey, there is no known trigger or cause. And, and I think that's the problem. That's the frustration for the patient as well, that, you know, they can't work out what's causing it. Um, and, and in a sense, that sometimes makes them feel foolish even going to the doctor to discuss it. 
Mm. And can you tell us a little more then about World Urticaria Day then, please? Yes, I can. Uh, World Urticaria Day, it's the first one uh, of its type. It's this Wednesday. It's launching the 1st of October. And the whole aim is to raise awareness of people living with um, urticaria, um, how they can manage it, how they, where they can go for help, and help educate, not not just GPs, you know, the, um, the medical profession as well, so that we get a better path to diagnosis for these people, but also for the public. Um, as Pixie said, you know, often you'll see somebody with a rash or something like that when you're out in public, and the first thing people think is, oh, is that contagious? Should I go near them? And it causes such social isolation that we really want to highlight that this is something that a lot of people suffer with, but there's help out there. Mm. And where can our listeners go to find out more information? Well, Allergy UK have prepared a pack that we'll be launching this Wednesday, and they can go to our website and read all about how to get help, where to go, uh, and that is allergyuk.org. Lovely. Well, Dr. Pixie and Lindsay, can I thank you for talking to us this afternoon? Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For all the latest community news and events, 103.2 Preston FM. Your community, your idea.